Hello guys, this is Valerie Hi. and my name is Roman. Last episode we talked about how not to make a lot of mistakes yeah. doing UX testings. Right, right now yeah. we are talking about what? So it is time to give you more practical advice and we are actually devoting this video to how to find respondents for any interview, whether it is a testing interview, a user testing interview, user experience testing, or just customer development interview. So basically uh, we are going to share our experience with you, how to find people to give you some information. Exactly. So this video will contain three points, sources, insights in different sources, and also the key idea how to make most value from any sources and any any testing. Any testing, right. So yeah, Roman is right. Every tip we are going to share with you has some insight. So please be careful and search for it as for some hidden jewel, right? And we are going to start with LinkedIn. Are you going to put the LinkedIn icon here? Yep, the logo. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. You're the best. <laughs> uh, well, I think that LinkedIn is pretty a cold outreach platform nowadays. So there is nothing like network, but just cold outreach. And oh, oh, I heard that some years ago, uh -huh. people were communicating there. Really? Communicating and shared the photos, the ideas. And but experience. Right, yeah, but right now it is just not a trash. Mm -hmm. Not a junk. But looks like a yeah. legalized platform for a lot of ads and you don't pay for it, by the way. Right, right. <laughs> it's Facebook. So what about LinkedIn? Yeah, uh, basically that is still a great source for establishing connections that uh, can give you enormous value for the development of your product mm -hmm. and also for the experience, like endorsing your experience, for right. example. Right. Like I remember the day when I wanted to work on the inbound marketing mm -hmm. processes. So I just found a couple of people who are into the inbound and I had a really nice conversation with them. So, and that is how actually I managed to improve the okay. inbound marketing of Dashly. But still, mostly I use LinkedIn for outreaching people because I know that these people can give me precious insights and precious information during the interview. Yeah. Well, of course, that for a start looks like cold selling or pitching. Have you experienced that? Yeah. So let's go with advantages of LinkedIn. First of all, LinkedIn is good for segmenting or targeting the audience because totally. every person who has the profile mm -hmm. in LinkedIn has the job title, the yeah. company name, and also the experience. So yeah, we like could you, say- you know everything about right, the person. Right, so using some sort of software, you could target the key audience, the needed audience, mm -hmm. and then outreach people that you really need exactly. for UX testings. And so, you can also automate it. Yeah. Could you share your experience with automation of this outreach? Yeah. Um, right now I'm using LinkedIn Helper for that. And that is the tool I like greatly just because it saves my time. But indeed, you should be very careful with it because you need to think thoroughly about each and every process. Mm -hmm. like the connection, the message and the connection, the follow up right. and uh, like, all right, you have to imitate your natural behavior at mm -hmm. some time, but let's just confess. <laughs> let's confess to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> like automation saves your time. And while LinkedIn Helper does the outreach that I could do manually, I can do something even more useful either for the product or still again for the outreach. So I can manage outreach in other platforms. Yeah, exactly. Like and of course it is the testing inside the testing. So you every time testing mm -hmm. the first connection note that you welcome or you invite the person with mm -hmm. and then you just evaluating which note is converting better. Exactly. That's it. That is the most important thing, actually, the copies. In our previous episode, we were focusing a lot on the crystal clear copies on landing pages. And 
I hope it is not only for the landing page, it mm -hmm. is also for the messages. So right. the simpler your message is, mm -hmm. the higher chance the respondent, the possible respondent, of course, will reply, right. you get connected. And um, so just make sure that you tell the person, hey, I'm not going to waste your time. Mm -hmm. And one more thing that is important here is, uh, is the incentive part. The incentive part, right. Everybody knows that time is money. That is why you should not be afraid of paying people for their feedbacks, for their time that they spend on you. And the worst thing that you could have, you could receive is just reject of receiving the money. And that's okay. Yeah, totally. Whenever I tell the person like, hey, how much is your consultation? How much do you charge for the consultation? I feel on the safe side because like that is first of all the sign that I'm not going to sell anything and right. I'm not going to pitch the person so I'm always crystal clear in all my messages like hey mm -hmm. I'm doing the research I'm ready to invest in it are you in right. and that's it, it is just a respect to people who are you testing exactly and the next source is communities right right now we have a lot of communities totally. and Internally, we have the list of 2,000 different communities. Yeah, sort of. Segmented into different topics like human resources, product managers, product marketing managers, mm -hmm. CEOs, and also the women in tech, SAS, e-commerce, and a lot of, a lot of, a lot of. And I believe now uh, there are even more communities yeah. uh, on the internet, especially because of the lockdown. So people want to unite and they want to talk to people. So I actually witnessed like communities growing like crazy on right. the web. Right. So let's share with people our insights about communities that we had during three years of yeah. finding people to test. Do you know the first rule of any community? Yeah. Yeah, first give and then take. Yeah. It is the most fuck up of the my career. Oh, when really? I yeah. When I was looking for people who were using mm -hmm. our best, our largest competitor. Right. And I was just pitching my question mm -hmm. and this question was very salesy, was very Mm -hmm. Promotionable. <laughs> promotionable. Okay. Do you call those messages promotional right now or that time you knew it? Right now. Okay. Right now. And after one day of uh, receiving a large post of the mm -hmm. admin of this uh -huh. SaaS group, Facebook group. Oh no. First face Facebook community. About your pitches. Right. Right. So I realized that it was very peachy, very salesy, mm -hmm. and from this time, since this day, I learned this lesson. So, what is the best way to first give? If you are in a community, mm -hmm. you just decide for yourself that you're a pro or a member of large topic, maybe, or large industry. Mm -hmm. And so, you have a lot of experience or maybe not a lot, but you have an experience. That is why yeah. you could share any experience because in the community, there are a lot of people who knows more than you, mm -hmm. but larger part doesn't know as much as you do. And you know what? You never know that. Right. <laughs> so just right. go and share what you know with the people. That's Someone it. will just treat it as very useful information. Mm -hmm. So at their point, at their point of um, exploration of the yeah. community. Just be the part of the community and not pitch your idea or maybe pitch your idea or your product mm -hmm. in the particular channels. If it is a Slack community, yeah. you have a particular channel to do that. But just be the member of the community, the part of the community and first give and then take. Exactly. So which is why I like to just go to any of the communities I belong to and scroll through the questions. And if I see, okay, I can share my knowledge here right. and uh, I can give some advice. So I will take a couple of minutes, but I will know for sure that I shared something with the person and probably that will change something in their processes or just the development uh, of their product. So whatever, just uh, the idea is 
to tell people as much as you know so to tell people everything that you know and when you come with a question like hey guys can you help me please tell me about yeah. your experience they will come to you and answer with great pleasure there is actually one more thing about the communities so it actually consists of many people of different uh, levels of mm -hmm. different occupations of different activities and uh, if you just see oh this person is an influencer i'm even afraid to put like to their post never never think like that just simply because you haven't even tried to establish the connection with them you can come to the person and say hey i know you did very well in this right. sphere I know you can help me. I know you can give me advice. Mm -hmm. I know you can at least connect me with someone who can uh, share the information with me. Don't think like, oh no, they are busy. They will just neglect my comments. They will never read my message. But have you tried? Have you tried sending the message? So just don't hesitate. Just do it and check and see the result. Right. Mm -hmm. The worst thing that you could have, okay. again, it is just ignoring your message. Right. That's it. Mm -hmm. or just no or just I have no time sorry it's not a problem it's not an issue you have tried this okay and we are going to speak about the final point it is paid platforms that especially focusing on finding the best people for you mm -hmm. for your testing we discovered these platforms I think after two years of mm -hmm. make of doing testings yeah Oh, probably they just appeared <laughs> after two years right. we started doing the <laughs> testings and these platforms are holy grail holy grail but they are expensive we need to accept this that they are expensive yeah mm, sort of sort well, of I don't, I don't understand what you mean by expensive <laughs> expensive means only in money not in time but mm -hmm. only in money because but how much how much yeah when you're using linkedin and communities probably you do not spend money on any outreach mm -hmm. but when you go into the platform you first see the pricing and first see the amount of money mm -hmm. that you will spend on every on each testing that is why okay. you you see the cost of this experiment or mm -hmm. of this testing firstly you mean to say that you evaluate every interview not only as the insights you're going to right. receive but also the right. money you spend on it mm -hmm. okay but still how much is one interview it depends so uh, the platforms charges for two parts mm -hmm. so the first charging part is the platform's fee okay they are charging for finding or for searching and segmenting the mm -hmm. best people for you. Yeah, and then connecting you connecting, with them. Connecting, right, right. And okay. the next part is just the incentive part mm -hmm. for the people they connected with you. Okay, okay, right. You're using these platforms much, yeah, much I more than, intensively. than me. Tell us how it is different to communities and LinkedIn outreach. Uh, probably the most difficult thing about this uh, platform is that you have to wait. Like, wait? The, the, yeah, you have uh -huh. to wait. The result doesn't depend on your activity. So you just yeah. set the qualification part. You just shoot your mm -hmm. requirements to the platform and sitting and waiting. Okay, where are my respondents finally? So that is the part that uh, actually irritates me. And uh, sometimes I think that it's actually much quicker to go to LinkedIn and do cold outreach <laughs> rather than uh, pay the money but wait for unpredictable right. amount of time. But still the main thing about the respondents requirement is the qualification part. Right. That is actually the thing you need to uh, think about in a very thorough way, not only with the user interviews mm -hmm. platform, but also with the LinkedIn outreach and the communities. Mm, right. Yeah, like whether you are ready to jump on a call with a person, you need to ask yourself first, okay, what is the portrait of the person I need to speak to? Like the position, the experience, the activities they do on a daily basis, the right. processes mm -hmm. they track, so mm -hmm. everything that is actually relevant to your research. And 
that is why I like user interviews because you can set the criteria right there and uh, just people fill in the special form and then you just look through the forms received and say okay I want to talk with this mm -hmm. guy I want to talk with that lady and that's how you choose the respondents for the further research yeah I agree that these forms reflect mm -hmm. the potential value from this person mm -hmm. so for example when they directly answer your question so okay okay I will go to another person and check whether they have more detailed answer or right. maybe they have more experience in this industry sure I just choose the person who mm -hmm. has the long read answers because they just not copy paste it, mm -hmm. but thought and then share it with you. Okay, okay, yeah. I see what you mean. Just anyways, you're awarding certain incentive to the interviewer and of course you want to share the incentive with yeah, those with who actually people. give you most of the insights and the information required for your research. Correct. Hey people, it was the list of insights about how to find the best people to test out your pricing page for example or maybe product landing pages whatever yeah. like so, the product developments that can be also a way to test or for example we are working on a certain feature for products and you don't know whether it is actually going to be applied in any industry so just go find the respondents and test it. So have an interview, talk to people. So only people will give you really precious information that you can um, use for changing your world, okay? Please share with us the feedback on this video because this is kind of a testing. We are testing, this is the second episode of this long topic and I yeah. think we have the content for the third episode. Sure, sure, we... but still I'm a bit worried whether our conversation is useful to the people or not. So we are waiting for your comments desperately. And also click on the bell just to be notified about our third episode of UX testing world. Yeah, what are we going to discuss in the next episode? I'm not sure, but I think we covered how to avoid many mistakes. Mm -hmm. We called another word in the last episode. Mm -hmm. Then we get to the ways how to find, how to search. Okay. And the logical continued Probably, to that. Probably, yeah, to share how our processes changed and how our life changed. <laughs> Yeah, maybe after we, introducing this. Right, maybe we could speak about the results or how to sure. implement the results. How yeah. to implement the data that you get from the mm -hmm. testings to the how to work with data. Yeah, sure. To not to make your product team sad. Right. And I have one more idea, but I will tell you about it in the next video. Oh, wow. sorry. <laughs>